And now it's time for a preview of an upcoming game by Tom Vassell. Today we're going to talk about a game called Majority Rules. This is a game that's going to be on Kickstarter, uh, or Democracy Majority Rules, and it's a game about the American political system. Now, this is not a game that if you're a Democrat or you're a Republican, you're going to hate because it makes you look bad. It, it, it skirts that issue by just looking at issues themselves and by looking at the system itself. Now, the system is abstract to a great degree, but it still will come through. And what this game is going to promote is a lot of negotiation and a lot of back and forth between the players. Let me show you. As I go over this, I need to point out, as I always do in my previews, that the components in this game are not completely 100% done. In fact, some of them will look uh, considerably different. And I look here in the book and there's even a gavel that's going to actually come with the game, which will be neat. And you can see some of the uh, nice components that will be coming with the game. But the game is, uh, in, each, in this game, you are trying to get the most political capital, uh, the most points, in essence, at the, at the end of the game. And so players are going to be doing that by controlling different regions on the board. Each player is going to start the game where they have an ideology, kind of, you know, basically, you can be traditional for regulation, change, liberty, or you can be a centrist. And each of those will have different uh, things that affect them during the course of the game. But more importantly, you're trying to control the different areas here on the board. Now this is a sample board layout. There's actually, this is the one that they put in the book, but there's other scenarios. You can turn the tiles over and move these around a little bit. So, but we're just going to look at the basic scenario. And so we have voters, activists, justice, bureaucracy, money, media, and lawmakers. And each of these comes with a corresponding card that gives that the player who controls each of these areas this card. Now these cards are good for several reasons. One, they give you a special power that you can use per turn. If you don't use that special power, then you'll get a political capital. So basically you sacrifice a point to use a special power. Also though, uh, at the beginning of each turn, you're going to get three supporters to work for you. And you're going to get three political influence that you'll be able to spend. These cards will give you more. For example, the justice card gives you an extra influence. The bureaucracy gives you two extra influence. The media gives you an extra support or an extra influence. The first thing players are gonna do on their turn is they're going to, after they take however many influence and supporters they get, they're gonna take these cards. These cards correspond to the outside six different regions here. And they're gonna pick two of these cards and then they're going to take the amount of supporters. So on the first turn, Everyone gets six, so I could put all six on one card and none on the other. I could do three and three. And then they're going to put these people out on the board in the spots where they've said that they're going to put them. And so, let's say people are putting different folks around the board. After that's been done, then everybody is allowed to move people onto these arrows that go from one spot to the other spot. These arrows, there can be more than one color there, but you can only send one of yours at the most to each area. After everyone has is finished doing that, and if there's an argument over the turn order here, you can do it simultaneously, then the guy who runs bureaucracy decides who wins this. Then all these arrows are moved, and the, the tokens on the arrows are moved, and you'll notice that that's the only way to get to lawmakers. So if you want to get to lawmakers, you need to put people in other areas and move them to the lawmaker position. Then we see who controls each area. Now sometimes it's obvious. Here, activist controls it, and justice, and bureaucracy. Here it's a tie, and the person who controls justice breaks ties, so that one's not so hard. But here, it's, there's a two blues, two reds, and a yellow here in the, on Lawmaker. Well, here what can happen is a coalition can be formed, and players can make any kind of deal that they want. They can, they can talk about things they'll do in the future. They can talk about things they've done in the past. They can't trade influence or, or supporters, but they can make a deal and say, I'll give you this if you give me that. And basically, let's say blue and yellow make a coalition here, then they beat red, and then yellow says, well, I'm going to let blue head up the coalition, and then blue will get the card. Because whoever controls each of these coalitions is going to get the matching card. So while each player started with one, now they're going to switch hands every turn, or possibly. And so money and lawmakers and... Those are going to go around. There's two other roles that will also be handed out. Maverick gets handed out to the person who has the least roles and least political capital. You're in last place. What do you have to lose? 
and the president is given out by the person who has the most supporters in voters and media. Whoever has the most supporters here picks the president, but they can't pick themselves. So there's a lot of negotiation that happens in this round. I mean a ton of negotiation. But eventually, it's done. Players get points right now for the cards that they have. And then after they do that, cards are given out to the person who is the head of the coalition in each area or who has the majority in each area. Then we go to the law phase. In the law phase, we're going to look at a deck of law cards. Now, each law card has a, a funny political cartoon on it. Uh, but basically, each law has a topic. But the main thing to notice here is what the law is. For example, here it's change versus voters. So the positive one from this would be the person. Uh, in this case, it would be yellow because yellow is for change. And then versus voters against the person who controls the voters at this point in time. That's electoral reform. Uh, here is change versus bureaucracy. Here's activist versus justice. Regulate versus liberty. Regulate versus the president. President versus lawmakers. Declaration of war. Bank reform, media versus money, change versus tradition, church and state, money versus activists. So you're, what's going to happen is the lawmaker, whoever controls the lawmaker, he's going to pick five of these. And he's going to look through the, he's going to draw five, and he's going to pick two laws that are going to come, that are going to be voted on. The president will look through all the discarded laws, and he will pick one of those. So there will be three laws. The lawmakers then decide which order we're going to vote in, then we start voting on each one. When we vote on one, everyone is going to use these two cards here. If you noticed, they have a yes and no. And you negotiate, blah, 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 back and forth, and then everyone votes. Some people are going to vote yes, and some people are going to vote no. That doesn't really matter, though, how you vote. What matters is after you've, you've just basically declared your position, players will then start using and spending influence back and forth, kind of like in a bidding war between the yeses and the noes. If the noes win, the card is discarded. If the yeses win, the card becomes a law. And then whoever controls the green one, in this case whoever controls the voters, gets to put two supporters for free on the board, and whoever controls the red one, in this case the lawmakers, has to remove two from the board. The person who bid the most gets to keep the law card. Anyone who bid for the winning, anyone who uh, was on the winning side, whether the law passed or failed, gets some political clout. So the laws will be voted on, and then we go back to the next round and we go on. Now, there's only 25 laws in the game, so the game is only going to have five turns because the lawmaker will draw them. There's a few other things I wanted to point out. Like I said, there's special abilities that the different people have. The president gets to pull a law. The maverick can stop one person from voting more than three influence on a turn. The lawmaker gets to pick the laws. The media can stop people moving on arrows. The activists can move someone from one faction to another. The voters can move three extra people from one faction to another. The justice breaks ties. The bureaucracy can determine the order that people will uh, move and the money, you can double the value of your influence on voting for one turn. So there's a special ability for each of these cards, which, by the way, have some other stuff on the back of them. Now, when the game is over, it's actually two different methods of scoring. Some of the law cards have unrest and order. If more unrest law cards have been voted yes upon and are in the game, then all the political clout that has been collected up at that point is discarded, period. So nothing that you've done during the game matters and only final scoring is going to happen. If there's an equal number, then you can only keep as much as you have supporters and lawmakers. But if there's more order, then you keep everything that you've gained so far. And we also do final scoring. What is final scoring? Well, it's here on the card here. You can see that you get three political capital for each power card you have in the last turn, five for having the most supporters on the factions, three for having three or more supporters on the most factions, three for having the most supporters in any single faction, five if you have the most law cards, three for having the most order cards, and three for having the most unrest cards. And so all of these different things will give you different cards and different accomplishments, and after you add up all the political capital, whoever has the most is the winner. 
Because of the open-endedness of these negotiations, this is a very different beast of a game than any game I've ever played. In fact, it almost reminded me of Cosmic Encounter to some degree, as players would say, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. No, you can't do this. I'm going to use my power here. And But there was a lot of wheeling and dealing, especially making those coalitions, because after a while, everybody has a decent amount of supporters on the board. So you can say, let me be the head of this coalition, and I'll let you be the head of this coalition. And someone else will come in and say, well, we don't need him. Let's just cut him out. And if you pull ahead, there's always the possibility that people aren't going to work with you anymore. But at the same time, they might not matter because they might get enough of the, uh, the unrest law cards out on the board so that everything you've done during the game doesn't matter and only final scoring. So there's a lot of interesting different features as you're putting people down, area control, but then you're moving those. But it doesn't matter if you have the most in any region, if the second most and third most decide to work together against you, then you, you, you've lost out. So that's that's a very interesting fact. They're, they said they're going to come out with different scenarios. Uh, what is the the book here talks about? There's an expansion coming out where you'll be able to play up with 10 players, but they'll have a U.S. election 212 scenario, Arab Spring 2011, civil rights 1964, and so on. And so you'll be able to take these different scenarios with different law cards. And there's no disadvantage or advantage to being liberty or regulate or change or tradition. Okay, so if you, th oh, I like one of those four, you're not going to be lambasted for being um, one of those, they, they, but they do work against their opposite, which just makes sense. The people who are for total liberty are against people who are for more regulation. That's just how it works. People who are for tradition are against people who change. They will ideologically bump heads. So if you're interested in this game and it's one that you'd like to play, then in just a few moments, uh, we'll, we'll talk about how you can get it. The link on Kickstarter. And that's that. Democracy, majority rules. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.